Uh, so if you have your own site or you have client sites, this is the time that I would highly advocate to say, if you have a staging environment, take your site, put it into a staging environment, install a plugin called the WP Beta Testing plugin, and select the uh, stable release version path or whatnot. And you'll get access to WordPress 5.3. Um, and if you notice bugs, please do report them. Uh, there are never enough people submitting uh, bug reports when WordPress 5.3 is in testing. Uh, but then when it comes out, everyone reports all their bugs, and then we have a new bug release that happens like a week later. Uh, but if you test now, you can maybe make sure that uh, as few of those bugs actually make it out there as possible. Uh, so when you first install WordPress uh, 5.3, uh, you might notice a couple of changes that have happened. Uh, there's this cool thing here um, now that'll like show you the password as you're typing. If you want, you can like change to that. Um, and you might, if you have a really eagle eye, I'm gonna make this all bigger. <laughs> that is not the change that's happening. Uh, WordPress is now German only, unfortunately. Um, no, but uh, there have been some different like style adjustments throughout almost the entire time into things like borders around inputs and the buttons look slightly different. Uh, these are all parts of uh, wide-ranging accessibility improvements that WordPress has been working on for a number of months. Uh, let's get started. Uh, the next thing you might see is this uh, cool feature called administration email verification. You might have heard about recovery mode in WordPress 5.2. Um, and one of the things that WordPress recovery mode does is that if there is a fatal error that occurs in your website, it'll email you information about that error and a way to get into something called recovery mode. And recovery mode is a way to kind of like figure out what's going wrong while your site is completely broken uh, for you to get in there. Uh, the way that works though is it emails your admin email address. And some people don't set up their admin email address correctly or they forget about it or their host sets it for them. So what this does is when you install WordPress 5.3 and by default every six months or so, it's gonna remind you to check uh, whether your administration email is correct or not um, and prompt you to update it. Uh, you could update it and it'll just take you to the settings page and you can update it right there. Um, if you want, you can disable that feature. There's a filter for it or to change the length or something like that. Um, I think it's pretty handy. Uh, the next thing we're gonna look at is a whole host of Gutenberg improvements. Those are the main things that really changed in WordPress 5.3. Uh, there aren't a lot of other things to show uh, that I can really demo for you, uh, but we'll take a look. So I've created this page here called Groups. Um, and to show off some of this new uh, WordPress 5.3 features. Let me put this in full screen mode. This is really hard to demo on such a small screen. Okay. Is that better? Okay. Uh, so there are a couple of new things. Uh, one of these changes is to the cover block. Uh, the cover block uh, had a couple of cool changes to it. Uh, you can now set uh, background colors instead of just choosing a photo or a video background, which is like, easier to display. There's also a uh, slider thing now that you can use to uh, change the size of the cover block, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, we also have a new thing called a group block, and the group block is pretty cool. Um, it allows you to group different blocks together um, inside a single column view. So in the past, we've had column block, and the column block lets you have like up to six columns and have all that stuff in there. But if you want, you can group all these things into a single group block that is one column. And the main thing that that allows you to do right now uh, is to set a background color. So you can set a background color that applies to uh, all the entire group of blocks. Beforehand, you'd have to do it for each block, and if there's spacing between the blocks, it would look weird. Uh, so this is a great way to go about doing that. A new block that we have is a block called the spacer block. Um, and this is something that you might have done um, or you might have seen your clients do where they hit like a million returns inside the WordPress editor to try and make space or to make things align. Uh, but now we have a dedicated block to do this in Gutenberg. Um, it's just called a spacer block and you add it the way you would any other block and then you can just drag it up and down to make as much space as you want. Uh, we also got some cool column block improvements. Um, I'm gonna create a new column block here. And one of the things that's cool about it is it starts off now with a prompt to do different layouts. Uh, so you can pick like a small column, wide column, wide column, small column, three smaller columns, the traditional kind of like <coughs> three column, wide center column. 
uh, thing and all that works there and then give you a quick way to get access to this kind of stuff and it'll prompt you right there with the sizes already selected if you want then of course you can kind of like adjust things back and forth and you can very figure it out what you want to do um, but if you're trying to do some more advanced layout type things um, I think this is pretty handy um, and there are a couple of new improvements to the comic block as well I'm going to show it uh, to you in this existing one here um, so we have this page uh, here. This is built with a column block. And one of the things that uh, is new in WordPress 5.3 is aligning individual columns. Uh, so I can go into here, and then I can select vertically aligned top, vertically aligned middle, vertically aligned bottom. And this is aligning the actual blocks that are inside of the actual column. So if you want to do some more cool layouts, things like that, you can do that. You can make things appear in different areas, uh, up at the top, up at the bottom, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see, yeah. Um, there are some other miscellaneous improvements to different blocks. For instance, the button block now uh, has a way to customize the border radius, which is pretty nice. Uh, so you can make your block style however you want it to be. Uh, by default, uh, in uh, 2019 is a completely square block. Uh, the different themes might have different defaults, but if you want to change it on a case-by-case -case basis, you can just do that now. Let's see, what other blocks do we have? Those are the main things uh, in terms of new blocks um, and block modification changes. Uh, something else that I've changed though that's pretty cool that might be a little bit hard to show again on such a screen like this, uh, but is there's been a whole bunch of like animations and small things that have happened uh, in the block editor. So before, if you were to move a block up and down, it kind of just like jump right into place. Uh, but now when you use this block mover, it kind of tries to, doesn't work so well when you're super, super zoomed in, uh, but it tries to maintain uh, the position that you're in um, and move everything around it. And I think that this, it's one of those really small things that makes a surprisingly large difference. Uh, when things are kind of like animating this, it's a bit easier to like picture what's actually happening and make it feel like it's actually working on a page um, and all these things moving up and down. At least I found it a bit easier to track uh, where things are going, what's actually happening. This still looks a little bit weird if you move it by hand. Like for instance, there's this weird kind of like scroll thing that has to happen there. And that looks a little bit worse than it uh, normally would just because of how we're zoomed in. That's a little bit weird. But I think if you're someone who is using uh, the up and down navigation blocks, this makes like a huge difference uh, to make this a lot easier to use. Uh, speaking of which, we can now select multiple blocks properly, um, but we're still kind of limited in the kind of actions we can perform. What we can do once we've selected multiple blocks is that we can get straight into the group functionality uh, that we talked about just before. Um, so it provides you a quick way to take all these blocks and put them into a group and then assign all your background colors and things to that to them. And then you can go in your block toolbar menu and you can also uh, ungroup everything and take it all out. Um, the separator block now has the option to choose color. Uh, so you can pick whatever color you want for the actual border. That's really hard to see, uh, but believe me, it is actually in fact changing colors. Let's see. Uh, there have also been uh, some changes to things kind of like flying around in your face. Uh, you'll notice that there isn't like a, um, yeah, I need to get rid of this. But there are kind of less um, block, what are called like block appenders appearing all over the place. Um, one of the things that was kind of, could be a little bit annoying about Gutenberg, depending on how you use it, is that like uh, the places to like add new blocks would like always be showing up. Um, but one of the things that's new now is there is a action, um, I don't know if this is actually new or not, but the change is new, uh, to insert before and insert after uh, really easily. Instead of having to like find a really, really small touch target, uh, you can just use something from the menu. Um, I think that's pretty handy as well. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, there's uh, one couple of other small things, again, in just kind of like these uh, visual tweak improvements. When you update now, instead of it taking over like the whole top of your editor and bumping things down, we just have a much smaller kind of convenient snack bar notification that just appears in the bottom left and will go away on its own. Um, and so for things that are like kind of frequent events that don't need your full 
uh, dedicated attention, um, all of those are going to appear now as snack bar notices instead, uh, which is again kind of like helping with the visual like overwhelmingness that can sometimes happen with Gutenberg. Those are the main things uh, that are happening in Gutenberg. Uh, there have been some speed improvements. I think it's like 44 milliseconds instead of like 60 milliseconds uh, whenever you type a character on a like really, really stressed case. Uh, so uh, Gutenberg is more performant than ever. Um, yeah, that pretty much sums up the Gutenberg changes. There were um, some kind of ideas for large scale Gutenberg things, I think. Some people were thinking that at this point we would have the idea of the widgets and have the widget screen redone and all that kind of work. Um, but that's not uh, ready yet in WordPress 5.3. Uh, we just still have some more uh, iterations, speed improvements, accessibility improvements, uh, making everything easier to use as much as possible. Um, and those things are all coming later at this point. Um, uh, the other kind of like big feature that is happening in WordPress 5.3 is around image uploading. This is kind of really hard to demo, uh, so I'm kind of going to try. Uh, but one of the things that's new to WordPress 5.3 is large image support. And so what this means is that if you're uploading an image from your phone, let's say, and that's like really, really huge, uh, it can be. Um, if you're working on a host that might be a little bit underperformant, um, or if you just have a really large theme with like dozens and dozens of image sizes where you're uploading gigantic images, one of the things that WordPress does now is it tries to generate a, um, what's called like a threshold image. Uh, that is smaller than your original image and do all of the image variation sizes based on that. Um, and what that actually means is that it should be easier if you're uploading large high quality images onto your site uh, for WordPress to perform all of those resizes without crashing. Um, if your site does crash when it's uploading the images, WordPress will now automatically retry to regenerate all those image sizes as you upload the image all in the background just for you. Um, and it should just work. So if you're uploading large images, things like that, um, and you were getting errors before, you shouldn't be anymore. Uh, there is a kind of interesting point here in that the threshold image size is 2560 pixels. And if you are a artist and you're uploading like portfolio images and you really want to have these gigantic images in your site, what's happening now in WordPress 5.3 is that the full image size will be replaced with this scaled down version. Uh, so I'm not sure what this is going to change for like portfolio themes or things like that. They might adapt um, on their own, but it does might mean that if you're <coughs> intentionally trying to get a really high quality image into your site, that it won't be the super high quality image anymore. It'll be the scaled down version. Uh, so that's just something to be aware of. Um, and I would expect that most uh, theme developers that are really on top of it, uh, doing gallery themes and things like that are probably aware of these changes. Uh, the next big thing, uh, kind of the last big thing, is 2020. Um, 2020 is the new uh, default theme in WordPress. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, I think it's really like the first theme uh, that is a default theme that's really truly made for Gutenberg. Um, you can kind of see that in uh, this kind of demo page. It, this looks essentially identical uh, to what it did inside the Gutenberg editor itself. Uh, whereas before, I think we still had some struggling bits there. Um, I'm not a designer, so I'm not gonna like try and give you like a review of like uh, how 2020 is from like a design perspective. Um, but I think it's a really really cool uh, default theme with some unique attributes to it. Uh, like it has this menu here, and this is a completely different menu. Uh, so you have your default like main menu here, but you can have an expanded menu uh, with different menu items if you want to have more context, but have a really simplified menu uh, for your upper top menu area. It has a cool search functionality that like takes over the page like that, which I think is pretty neat. Um, and it comes built in with a social menu uh, with um, a whole bunch of different icon support. Um, and you just edit it like a regular menu in WordPress. Um, I think that's pretty much it with uh, 2020 that I can really cover from a developer perspective and not really a designer. Um, but it's pretty neat. There is a post on make.wordpress.org slash core. Um, if you aren't following this blog, I would highly recommend it. It kind of like details all the changes that are upcoming with WordPress. Um, but there's a great uh, post here about 2020 and all the features that it provides. Um, and it's pretty neat. Um, that's everything that I wanted to cover. Uh, so if anyone has any questions about WordPress 5.3, um, I'm happy to answer them until Steve tells me I'm out of time. Yes? Quick question. If I wanted to do 
uh, a picture and a paragraph or description, and how can I do that on Pinterest? You should be able to just use the image block. Um, and so when you put in the image block, you can change it to a layout that's called like image and text. Um, and it should theoretically just work. There is a thing that says image and text? There should be, yeah. I don't think I'm going to find it. It's called media or something. Media and text right there. Media and text. This has changed a lot um, in Gutenberg. There used to be like a kind of like different way of doing this, but I think this is kind of the new way forward. Um, there used to be like a thing with like dragging images. You have the whole thing. Um, but I think this is probably one of the best ways to do it. You can also do it now with a columns block. They're pretty flexible for that. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Yes. A couple of things. Firstly, uh, on blocks, can you sort blocks? Uh, in what context do you mean? Suppose you have. Uh, so you outline two, suppose you have two columns, blocks uh, are horizontal, and you number them, can you sort them? I don't think so, no. You could probably build a plugin to do that. Any uh, other questions? Yeah, I uh, let's get to someone else first, and I'll come back to you. Yes? Uh, can we change the color of headings? Yeah, that's a new change um, in WordPress 503, actually. Uh, you can now uh, change the text color for heading blocks. Uh, so this is that one, and I now get a color settings. You could change this twice. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, how is uh, the CSS? Like, let's say I want to go in there and I wanted to CSS code a lot of it. Will it still act as the way it's acted in, in the past, where it will make the CSS go into the cow theme, or you could set up the CSS on another platform? So if you're, um, are you trying to make like one-off CSS changes or more like structural, large scale CSS changes? Let's say if I, I go and let's say I want to do a media query because I don't like the way that it breaks into mobile mm -hmm. and I want to adjust it when it hits the, like, you know, the, the media query side. Can I go in there and actually make the changes like before or is there a different way now? Uh, it's the same. Uh, so you could do it in your child team if you wanted to. Uh, the kind of like recommended way for one-off CSS changes is to use the customizer. Um, so if you haven't, yeah, um, in additional CSS. Okay. Um, so that all works uh, the same. There shouldn't be any changes to that. All right, great. Any other questions? Back to you. I meant this is with the image sizes. Mm -hmm. Is there some kind of uh, a piece of software you recommend to uh, change a batch group of, uh, suppose you have like 1,200 pictures on your phone, mm -hmm. you want to load them up. Is there some batch software that will change the size? Um, tons of different utilities for that. There, there are a bunch of different utilities for that. I like you could use Photoshop. You could use probably any photo application. Um, if anyone else has recommendations that they want to shout out, um, yeah, Smush, Smush, Imageify, Imageify, yeah. the plugin, Imageify. There are a lot of plugins if you search image optimization plugin. Yeah, there should be a bunch of options for that. Um, you do it with Automator. Right. Yeah? Uh, how is, um, like in the past, when I dressed up with WordPress, and because I'm, I'm very mobile, I do a lot of mobile stuff, mm -hmm. so like it's like, I, how is the Gutenberg editor when it comes down to mobile? That's a great question. Um, this is, uh, again, one of those things that's like impossible to <laughs> demo, like what this looks like on my phone. Uh, up here on the screen, um, but one of the things, there have been a number of improvements to how Gutenberg behaves in mobile. Um, I think there was one big change that was, is kind of sounds simple, resolving around like the carrot position, and like the carrot would completely get lost when you're trying to like use Gutenberg on your phone, and it was like impossible to use. That's fixed in WordPress 5.3, um, and it's supposedly a lot better. Um, I still think um, it's kind of difficult to use on mobile, um, if you're just doing your basic kind of like text writing, um, it can be good. But like for instance, I wouldn't want to try and like edit these uh, column blocks that already like are pretty much impossible to like properly click on the right things on mobile. Um, I think there still isn't a great solution for that yet. 
Um, one of the cool things that is being worked on is the, I don't know what the state of it is recently actually, um, of the WordPress uh, mobile apps. And so the mobile apps have like, I think at this point, like partial Gutenberg support for like some blocks and things like that. I think when that becomes fully evolved, uh, that would probably be the best way to go about editing in Gutenberg, just because I think they'll have a lot of benefits from it being like the actual like app code instead of like running in a website. But there have been a lot of improvements. I still think it's difficult, unfortunately. Yep. Just a quick question. I know there's a term for size wise thinking about, but let's say I have a list of neighborhoods up on top, mm -hmm. and you want to go to uh, Harlem. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that you can click Harlem and then just get to Harlem at the bottom of the page? Yeah, um, so there is a. Um, Somewhere in the advanced settings. If you click a heading. Is it only a heading? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the HTML anchor. So what you can do is you can add in some anchor text here. And then when you create a link, um, you would put in the hash sign and then whatever anchor text you put there next to the heading. Uh, and that'll generate it. I think there's also a table of contents block that's like third party that someone has that will like automatically do that based on the headers that are already in your document. So if you've already set it up so that you have header, 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 I think there's a table of contents like block that you could just put at the top of your post and it'll automatically generate all that Ultimate stuff for blocks. you. Yes. Ultimate blocks, I'm being told. <coughs> yep. Uh, has the uh, ability to import uh, tables from either Google Sheets or Excel been perfected? Um, I couldn't tell you. Um, there have been some improvements to table blocks generally. Uh, you now have the ability to specify header and footer rows for table blocks, and you can align columns uh, left, center, or right inside tables. That's new to 5.3. I don't know if there is an equivalent. Um, I think there used to be like something in Tiny MCE where you could like paste from a spreadsheet like that. Um, I couldn't tell you to be honest. Um, I think it would, but I wouldn't be able to tell you for sure. I had a plugin for. Uh, uh, I had a plugin to Mm -hmm. but it really hasn't worked well at all. Yeah. <laughs> I'll look into that. I'll look into that. I don't know off the top of my head. We're good? One more question? Yeah. Translator, is it available? I saw some of translator. Can you? Uh, like in terms of do you want to write posts in multiple different languages? Yeah. Um, this is this area I don't know a whole lot about in terms of translation plugins. Um, I think for the most part, it kind of works the same way that it did pre Gutenberg, um, and that I think a lot of these plugins create different <laughs> versions of the post. So you'll have the same post, and you can copy it from your English version to whichever other language you want to translate it in, and then you essentially write the whole post again. Um, I don't know if anyone has any other resources to share about that. G Translate apparently is a good plugin for that. I've used WPML. WPML, yes, yeah, the best, most one. Yeah. Into the different things. And then it will give you a, a whole new post with with the copy of the English content, and then you can just just type or, over or translate it. You just type over that. You know, instead of I said word by word. Yeah, and I think WPML sponsors like a whole bunch of stuff. It's a good resource for that. There could be in the future like. Um, I think one of the long-term goals for WordPress is to like improve multilingual support. We're talking like three years from now. Um, there are some really cool things that you could do with blocks, but I don't know if there are any plugins that are doing that yet.